Parts Express, the number one source for audio, video, and speaker building components. Hi, it's Mike V from Parts Express, and I'd like to talk to you about the new Overnight Sensations. We are now stocking the Overnight Sensations, which is a small two-way bookshelf type speaker designed by one of our Tech Talk enthusiasts, Paul Carmody. It features a pair of the Hi-Vi B4N 4-inch mid-range woofers, Dayton ND20 FA-6 3-quarter inch dome tweeters, and this precision cut CNC knockdown cabinet. It also includes the crossover components that you're going to need to build the speaker as well as the port tube. Some of the items that you might need in order to complete this entire project are going to be a soldering iron, speaker wire, an adhesive such as Gorilla Glue, a couple of wood clamps, binding posts, and a hot glue gun. You may also need a set of wire strippers and solder. The first step in building the overnight sensations is assembling the crossover. I always print out a copy of the crossover just so I have in my mind how it's going to be assembled. What I do first is align and mark where the inductors are going to mount on the board. You want to make sure there's no crosstalk with the inductors, so what you want to do is align them so that they're not facing the same direction and they're not too close to each other. One inductor is typically standing up, the other one's facing down. I always use zip ties to hold the inductors to the board. Typically what I try to do is space them out as far as part as the uh, crossover board allows. And then the key thing that I have in my mind when using air core inductors is when I look through the hole in an air core inductor, I don't want to be able to see the other inductor whatsoever. I twist everything up, make sure everything's laid out as according to the instructions, and solder the components. I also connect the lead wires, and that's going to be the wires running from the binding posts to the crossover, which is your input to the crossover, and then run lead wires to the output, which are going to be connected to the speaker. I always give myself plenty of room. I typically try to keep, them, keep the lead wires at about 48 inches at the most and 24 inches at the least. This gives me plenty of play so that when I go to connect the speakers to the crossover, I'm not cramped for space and I know that I have enough inside of the cabinet where it can reach it easily without making any damages to any of the speaker terminals. Once the solder has completely cooled off, I go back and I use hot glue to hold the lighter components such as the capacitors and the resistors to the crossover board itself. Prior to assembling the cabinet, what I always do is I try to mock it up and pre-assemble it without any type of wood glue. The CNC cabinets make it real easy to do this because everything fits together very, very well. Once I know that I have the correct pieces lined up in the correct places, I start to apply wood glue. In this case, I use standard yellow wood glue that you can find at any local hardware store. Parts Express sells Gorilla Glue, which is a polyurethane type glue, and that's highly recommendable as well. As you'll see, this multi-ply birch cabinet is made of very, very nice birch wood. So you want to make sure that you're not using too much glue and that you wipe the excess away as quick as possible so that way you have less prep work when finishing the cabinet. What I found worked best for this project was to assemble all sides except for the front and the back so that way I would have access to the inside of the cabinet. I then drilled the holes for the binding posts on the back. Again, those are sold separately, but you can find those in the related items 
on the product page for the overnight sensation. And then after the glue's cured, I start to sand it down and make sure it's all cleaned up. The next thing I do after I have all my sides put together is I put on the front baffle. And I clamp everything in place, making sure everything is level, flush, and looks presentable before moving forward. What I did was I finished the cabinet before installing the drivers. Make sure that you sand all the surfaces so that way you don't see any type of imperfections. Now you can finish the cabinet however you like. Next we need to install the crossovers into the cabinets. What I did was use Gorilla Glue to ensure that the crossover was not going to move once the polyurethane glue set up. To use Gorilla Glue you'll have to apply water to both surfaces that are to be made together. And then after that apply the glue and just lay the crossover board inside of the cabinet. It takes about four hours for that to set up completely and cure. Before putting the back panel on, install the binding posts of your choice. Next, I drill the pilot holes and install the port tubes. This package includes adjustable port tubes, so make sure that you measure and get the correct length. For this project, I use a speaker ceiling cock to hold the port at the right length. Finally, I wired the crossovers to the drivers and to the binding posts for the back plate of the cabinet. Next, I applied some super glue to the tweeter just to ensure that it's going to hold itself in place permanently. But as you'll find, the tweeter fits very snug as is on its own. It might not even need any type of adhesive. I would still recommend super glue. Next, I applied speaker sealing caulk to the back of the high vi B4 ends and secured them into place. I then installed the back plate onto the cabinet. This completes the overnight sensations and I really believe that you're going to enjoy the sound. Over 15,000 products, free same day shipping on most orders, 45 day no hassle returns and free tech support. PartsExpress.com, the number one source for audio, video and speaker building components.